Hello everyone and welcome to SE Geek, the internet's most passionate software engineering show. I am your host, the Software Engineering Geek, and in this show, we're going to teach you how to initialize and clone Git repositories. So sit back and let the knowledge seep in, because SE Geek begins now. Okay, in this video, I'm going to show you how to create a repository, how to clone a repository, and how to uh, make a centralized repository. So we're going to get we're in our Git directory here. Usually, what I do uh, just in general is I'll make a Git folder off of my home directory. Usually, I I'll call it just you know lowercase Git, so I can always just get access to it very easily. But for the sake of argument, I'm just going to make a directory, oops, call it test, uh, change directory to test, and we're going to make a get repository. So get init, and that's it. Now we have a get repository, and we're on branch master. So what I'm going to do, uh, just to you know speed this along, I'm going to touch test.txt and I'm just going to get add test.txt and get commit dash m init. So I did a couple things, and I'm just going to talk you through it so that you understand. I'll talk more about this, you know, in particular, but basically all I did was touch is just a command that creates an empty file. I added it to the repository, and in this particular command, I'm going to commit it. So, oops, did I mean commit? Yes, I did. So, that's another thing is... Git gives you a little help along the way when you screw something up because I was really close there. But So I created a new file, and that's in my repository now. So now I have a file with a repository. So next thing I want to do is let's just do a clear and go up one level. So we want to do a, um, let's see, I have a, folder set up here for central so I'm gonna change to central and basically I'm going to make a central repository here so we're going to get init dash dash bear I think you need well I'm not sure what it I think shared was depends on what you're using it, it for you know this is something you might want to do a little bit more research in but I think you we only for this example we actually only need bear, so we ha now have a bear repository here, and actually if I look into it, I see all this extra stuff. Now the difference between a um, regular Git repository and a bear one is the bear one does not have a working what's called a working directory, which is where you know you'll see files. So this is just all of its internal all the internals of Git. And we're, we'll be talking about this uh, in much more detail in a, you know another tutorial. Um, but you know that's what you see here. So now if I go back and go to my test repository, and so now we have our test repository here. And just to show you, in this repository, we have that, see that .get file? That is like the where Git stores all of its metadata for its repository. So if we go into dot and check that out, you'll see everything that we saw in the bare repository. So the bare repository just has the metadata and stores you know files internally, but doesn't have this working directory which actually has files in it like our test.txt so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to get push and I'll talk much more about that later but I'm going to our central repository 
and I'm going to be pushing star colon star. I think I need to quote these if I remember correctly. Let's try that and see if that. So basically what that did is that pushed all branches. Um, we only had ma master on this to our uh, get repository, you know, up there, our centralized one. So now if we go out and go to our central repository, we now have, you know, this bare master. Um, if we do a get status, can't run this, doesn't have a working tree. That's one thing, you know, on a bare repository, you're you are a little limited on what you can do, um, but we'll run a get k. So now, you know, obviously we can see we have one commit in here. You know, it's very limited, but, you know, we have that one repository. So now what we can do is we have our centralized repository. Um, what we could do here is, let's just clear this off so we can see and... So we have our centralized repository. What we could do is a get clone. And this is another way to get a repository, you know, one that's already out there somewhere. Now, you know, you'll have to know how to get at that particular repository, whether that's through SSH, uh, which might require a little bit more setup, uh, or if it's over HTTP or something like that. If it's locally, we can just type, you know, we already know the path to repository which is just you know central git right now and we can you know put that pretty much anywhere uh, I'm going to call this test 2 is where I want to put it and hit enter and it cloned it into test 2 so now if we take another look we now have test 2 right there which is you know same repository so go to test 2 on master and we'll see here we have you know test two the dot get and actually just so you know this ll that's an alias I have for uh, the command line which is very common for common for Linux uh, if you're on Windows you probably won't have that you'll probably have ls which does that or you can do ls dash al which will you know display it like this um, and you can uh, I'll, I'll probably do uh, a later video where I'll talk about Linux command lines and how to set up aliases for things. But it's very, uh, setting up an alias for the command line like this is very similar to how I set ones up for get. So if I do get status, you know, it shows me the status of get. Or if I do get st, same thing, which I showed you uh, the configuration in the last tour. So that's pretty much it for just setting up, uh, you know, Git repositories, initializing them, cloning them. I did show you push, but I'll talk much more about that in another tutorial. So that's pretty much all for now.